Shuddha Kanikaya, the minor collection discourses, Sutta Nipata, Atta Kavagga, Sutta number 4.6, Jara Sutta, on getting old and decaying. Very short indeed is this life, where before reaching a hundred years span, he is already dead. And even if one were to surpass it, still, he most certainly will get old and die because of his decaying body. People grieve over things they cherish, nor willing to let go. But there is no way to hold on to things forever. Witnessing the inevitability of separation again and again, how could you still be surrounded by loved ones living the household life? Whatever you think that belongs to you, all that in its entirety will be given up and abandoned when you are dying. Understanding this fully, someone calling himself a wise student of mine would no longer build emotional ties with anything that which is experienced in a dream, but at waking up is nowhere to be seen, in exactly the same way. No loved ones are to be seen again the moment you are dead and gone. Even though you had a relationship with those you loved, calling out their name and hearing their voice, but the moment they are gone, all that remains is the name you knew them by, which now you speak out loud and nothing else. Those unwilling to let go of things accumulated in the past, also in their stinginess for acquiring things, don't want to part ways even with their wailing and sorrows. Meanwhile, the sages, in their quest for true peace and calm, fully give up the seizing and grabbing of possessions, be it of people or of things. As for the bhikkhu, who lives withdrawn from the crowd, secluded as he dwells and practices in his humble abode, it truly is more beneficial for him to reside alone staying away from associating with those living the household life and avoid being seen at their homes. Not calling any place his permanent home, the wise one does not get settled anywhere, fully detached from any likes or dislikes, remaining free from the burden of developing relationships, whether those with friends or with enemies. Thus, much like the raindrops sliding off from a leaf, so too would grief or the desire to grab and possess that come with associating with others. These tendencies can never find their home in his heart. Just as a water droplet cannot latch on to the lotus as it slides off, leaving its petals and leaves untouched and not soiled. Likewise, the sage remains untouched and not soiled by whatever that is seen, heard, or experienced. Thus, the wise one remains pure because he does not continue thinking or imagining about what was seen, heard, or experienced nor does he seek for something outside of himself to come and purify him, for he is finished with being passionate about things, including dispassion. Sad, sad, sad.